All right, so welcome to the 15th episode of Advanced English, uh, the New Year's for the Chinese New Year was on the 10th, there's New Year's Day. Uh, I taught over this weekend. And this is a continuation of what I have been teaching. So I'm going to review some of the old words and then give you some new words and then uh, tie this in to the Chinese New Year celebration. We're gonna start out with that word spontaneous. We talked about spontaneous before. Um, it's when something happens um, suddenly, without planning, but it's important to distinguish this from a, an accident because you do make a conscious decision to do something. You just didn't plan to do it. You just kind of boom, spur of the moment uh, on a whim, you do it. But before we get into needing to know that definition, we already learned the definition. I wanna make sure you can use the parts of speech correctly. So we're gonna, Look at it as an adjective, spontaneous, an adverb, spontaneously, and a noun, spontaneity. So go ahead and use those correctly in this example. We have, he blank howled at the moon for no apparent reason. The decision to go to the beach was completely, and her made every day unpredictable and fun. So go ahead, I'll give you the answers right now. He spontaneously howled at the moon for no apparent reason. How is the verb. So obviously we need the adverb to describe that. The decision to go to the beach was completely spontaneous. Again, that's an adjective describing the decision, which is the noun there. And the last one must be her spontaneity made every day unpredictable and fun, right? You can have spontaneity if you are somebody who does things uh, spontaneously, or you are a spontaneous person. The next word also from uh, last week, so it's a review, is simultaneous. It's an adjective. The adverb is simultaneously. That's easy enough. Remember, this is when two things happen at the same time. So let's go ahead and see if you can use those correctly. Again, this is more of grammar because you need to know which part of speech uh, it is. So the traffic lights changed simultaneously allowing cars from all directions to proceed. In the experiment, the scientists observed a simultaneous increase in temperature and pressure. Now, the next word I'm going to add in, I just like some words that have similar sounds. They begin with S and end in us and uh, like this. Uh, we have the word synonymous. Sometimes students know that, don't know that word synonymous, but they know what a synonym is. A synonym is when two words have the same or, or nearly the same uh, meaning, right? Small and tiny, for instance. So um, again, this first part is to get familiar with the part of speech as an adjective, synonymous, uh, and, and as a noun. If it's a noun, I could ask the question, what is a synonym for joyful, right? It's easy, right? Happy or glad or something like that. and if I want to ask that same question, part of speech is different, synonymous. What is synonymous with mad? Again, the answer could be angry or upset or something like that. Uh, but I'm looking here, really want to make sure you're using the words correctly with the correct preposition. What is a synonym for joyful? What is synonymous with mad? And now that you're, uh, I'm going to give you this, this one synchronous and synchronized. This one can be difficult because those are both adjectives. And I, I can say you could use them interchangeably, but I'm going to try to just show you which ones should be used with uh, which ones based on context. So, um, and then we have synchronicity. Synchronicity is the noun there. And it's when things are not just happening at the same time, because remember, simultaneous was that way. And grammatically and even Coherently speaking, we could use simultaneous or synchronous, and it generally would hold. But synchronous, uh, usually there's something, they're working together beautifully. Usually when there's dance or music, it synchronized is going to be uh, better than simultaneous. But, but again, uh, it could be your word choice. I just want you to feel the difference between 
simultaneous and synchronous. So here we go. I'm going to just give you the answers as I go. The synchronous blinking of the fireflies illuminated the night forest. Now that's almost poetic. And if you wanted to be uh, poetic, of course you could use uh, synchronized uh, or, or synchronous. But to me, synchronous in this case is going to be more uh, poetic. And uh, or I mean, you could have used simultaneous as well, but but I do feel some sort of harmony. Again, synchronous, simultaneous. You could also use synchronized, but synchronized usually is is more orderly and practiced. Something like dance moves, or if you've ever seen synchronized swimming. In synchronized swimming, the swimmers perform identical routines at the same time. That's not completely true. Sometimes they're doing it at different times, but but they're moving in some sort of uh, harmonized action. So again, we're using a lot of these words, synchronous, synchronized, and simultaneous could easily be interchanged, but there are differences more in the feeling of what they represent. Uh, Carl Jung proposed the concept of synchronicity to describe meaningful coincidences. Carl Jung, of course, a famous uh, psychologist and, and philosopher, really, and when when things happen, when you've heard that term, things happen for a reason, or you know, just believing that there are there's some order to randomness and chaos, um, and we could call we could say things are coincidence coincidences. They just happen, but they have some sort of connection, and if they feel meaningful enough, we might use that term synchronicity. A very good word to know. Uh, nice spiritual word. So, are you ready? We've introduced two more vocabulary words. We went through the parts of speech. Now I'm going to keep the part of speech the same, and we're going to use the word correctly. Again, I want you to choose the best answer. Because they're all adverbs, you could, uh, there's really two that could be used interchangeably, but there still is a best answer. And I want the best answer, uh, at least based on, on, on what I've taught so far. So we have uh, simultaneously, synchronously and spontaneously the fireworks exploded blank in the sky lighting it up i'll say blank because i want you to read the first two the orchestra played blank every instrument in harmony right again we're talking about music we're talking about harmony it makes more sense to use synchronously in that uh in that context but by all means of course you could say simultaneous as well as this the fireworks exploded simultaneously in the sky, lighting it up. Again, uh, you could use that, I'm not saying you can't, but definitely the best answer is simultaneously here, synchronously here, and here we go. They spontaneously decided to start a band after school, and, and that's gonna make the most sense there. And now I want you to group four actions using these words, um, synonymous, simultaneous, synchronous, and spontaneous, spontaneous, deciding to sing in the rain, spontaneous, twins laughing at the same joke, simultaneous, friends dancing together in harmony, synchronous, and finding two words that mean the same thing, synonymous, all right? And uh, which action shows spontaneity? Planning a trip for months, Jumping into a pool, fully clothed on a hot day, walking in sync with music. Spontaneity, remember, spontaneous, no plan. You just kind of do something on a whim. Jumping into a pool, fully clothed on a hot day. Spontaneous, completely a uh, reasonable thing to do if you don't have your phone or money or something in your pockets and you have a long walk home and you've got a pool and you're just like, boom, jump in, get wet. And it wasn't really planned. It's kind of a uh, spontaneous thing to do that would show your spontaneity. And next one is uh, a question I would ask my students here. Uh, when have you done something spontaneous and what was the result? I had a lot of answers, a lot of different ones. You think about it. And uh, that would be, again, my lessons are, uh, you know, mostly my students talk, but um, in this format where I'm just making a video kind of going through what I talk about. Um, these are opportunities for expression. You can practice on your own in front of a mirror, however you want to. Here's a question. True or false? Big and small are synonymous. I like to catch people off guard. Sometimes they say yes. 
but but no, they're opposites, right? Of course, those are those are opposites, and they're not synonymous. Synonymous means the 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 same thing, uh, at least at least nearly the same meaning. And uh, which is the best example of something synchronous? Cats running in different directions, clocks striking noon at the same time, or leaves falling from trees at random times. Now I throw this in there because. I know I was talking about how synchronous is is about harmony, music, and and dancing. This one's not in that case, but there still is a sense. And given the other options, it is B, clock striking noon at the same time. Ding! There would be some sort of um, harmonics going on, perhaps. But again, cats running in a, a different direction, that's not synchronous. And leaves falling from a tree at random times. Although there, leaves could fall from a tree synchronously but the fact that i said random it, that makes it not really seem like it's going to be synchronous if it's random right synchronicity uh synchronous is going to to have some sort of order to it um so now i have a a, a reading uh, of course my students would read this to me and i'd correct them with the pronunciation but in this case i will uh read it for you in the heart of china the New Year's celebration was always a beautiful display of joy and tradition, especially in the Year of the Dragon. Dragons, symbols of power and wisdom, inspire awe and wonder. This year, as the fireworks light up the sky simultaneously, creating a tapestry of light over the town, and the sounds of laughter and music become synonymous with happiness, the spirit of the dragon seems to encourage spontaneous joy among the people. Without any planned prompt, dancers in dragon costumes begin to weave through the streets, their movements synchronized with the beating drums, bringing the legend to life. Of course, our, our story here is about the year of the dragon, which it is now. We are in the year of the dragon, and now I'm going to ask questions based on that reading. It's possible there's incorrect information in that but i i've tried to verify that uh use all my vocabulary words and uh according to the reading what do dragons symbolize in chinese culture and this is true uh power and wisdom is the correct answer and what does the word simultaneous refer to in the passage c the lighting of fireworks at the same time that's that's definitely none of the other answers really could uh work for this. The next one, what are laughter and music synonymous with according to the passage? Of course, happiness. And you could probably answer this had you not even uh, heard or read the, the passage. Uh, next question is, how do the dancers in dragon costumes move? Slowly and carefully, without any coordination, in synchronization with the drums, or independently of each other. Again, all of those answers are incorrect except for C, in synchronization with the drums. What encourages spontaneous joy among the people? Looking at all those answers, um, it could, you could look at it if you think about it, spontaneous, it can't be a planned event. It is the spirit of the dragon. Again, that was more according to the passage than any background knowledge, but you might be able to kind of figure it out even without that. So true or false questions right here or true or false statements that Tell me if they're true. If they're false, I'd like you to correct them. Tell me the sentence, correct it for me. The dragon is a real animal in Chinese culture. Of course, that is false. Uh, although it depends how you look at it. I mean, it is a real mythical animal in Chinese culture. Um, fireworks are set off at random times during the New Year's celebration. That's false. Although in reality, people do tend to uh, light them off at random times. But I mean, there is uh, some purpose in there. and. The sounds of laughter and music are associated with sadness during the celebration. False, right? That's happiness. And dancers wearing dragon costumes move randomly without following the music. Again, that's false. They were moving to the beat of the drums. And spontaneous joy is an unplanned, happy reaction from the people. Again, according to the passage, yes, that is true. And then I have a fun fact. I talked about that uh, mythical creature, right? Mythical is like legendary. We talked about that actually last week when we talked about the Tianqi monster in the Jilin province of China that is very similar to the Loch Ness monster. It's a very deep lake 
caused from a crater. Similar looking animal, kind of interesting. Um, but again, it's mythical. Nobody's really ever seen that. That was we learned the word mythical. Dragons, of course, are mythical creatures. They don't exist in reality, um, but they they exist in our imagination, and we can refer to them, and we usually understand what they are. However, uh, dragons do come in different forms, and I showed uh, these. Now, uh, this is the the Thai naga. That naga is actually a uh, it's an English word. It comes from uh, Hindu culture in in Thai. It's Nak, uh, and 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 the the Chinese dragon is here. And then like a Euro, I call it a European dragon, Western dragon. Um, uh, you know, and and there's differences between all of these um, uh, dragons. Some of the main differences, of course, are the Chinese dragon ha has legs. The the Thai Naga doesn't have legs. But this is like Thai zodiac. They have all the same animals as as the Chinese zodiac, but instead of the dragon, they have the naga, and the naga is you see it all over. I'm going to give you actually. I'm going to describe these. I don't talk much about the the European dragon, uh, or I don't in this uh, listening comprehension uh, portion of of this lesson. But I talk about. Uh, I mean, this this one breathes fire. It it has wings and can fly. The Chinese dragon actually does fly, but it doesn't have wings. I mean, you know, it's a mythical creature anyway. Why? You don't need wings. Um, so this one's listening comprehension. I actually don't let my students see it. They just listen to it. And then I ask them the questions. But in this case, if you want, you can close your eyes uh, while while I read it. I have a different screen opened up for, for my students. And um, so uh, you can just listen if you want. The Chinese dragon and the Thai naga are mythical creatures that hold significant places in their respective cultures. Yet they differ in symbolism, appearance, and cultural importance. Chinese dragons, often depicted as long serpentine creatures with legs but without wings, symbolize power, strength, and good luck. They are seen as wise and benevolent, associated with bringing rain and representing imperial authority. On the other hand, Thai Nagas are seen as large, protective serpents, usually connected to water. They guard religious sites and are believed to protect Buddhism, bringing rain and fertility. While both are respected, the Chinese dragon's role is more varied, touching on prosperity and power, whereas the Thai Naga focuses on protection, religious significance, and fertility. So, if you didn't, uh, if you if you listen to that, then I ask the questions. So the Thai Nagas are most closely associated with which of the following? Imperial authority, water and protection, or bringing rain for crops? The correct answer is water and protection. And uh, how are Chinese dragons typically depicted? As winged serpents, as long serpentine creatures with legs, or as large snakes guarding temples? As long serpentine creatures with legs. Serpent, the word serpent is, is like a large snake. Maybe a mythical snake, uh, although I think real snakes can be serpents, perhaps in, in different contexts. Um, it, it's like the group of snake-like creatures. So serpentine is just a snake-like creature, basically, and and that is how it was, uh, how how they're depicted. They have legs. Um, now, what role do Thai nagas play in their culture? Symbolizing power, representing imperial authority, or protecting religious sites. The correct answer is C, protecting religious sites. True or false? Chinese dragons are seen as malevolent creatures in their culture. Now, the listening was benevolent. Benevolent means good. Malevolent means bad. Mal means bad. You'll see it in things like malaria, which is like bad air, even though we know that that's not uh, the cause of malaria. Um, now, in areas that had like swampy water or whatever, they, they thought that's where it came from. Anyway, you'll see the word mal, malpractice, uh, malinformation, right? Mal means bad, um, and and benevolent means means good, and and they are seen as benevolent. So, um, Thai nagas are depicted with wings. That is false. Not only do they not have wings, they also can't fly. They're they're associated with the water. The Chinese dragon is a symbol of imperial authority. Imperial is like royal, and 
authority is is, is like the rule, the, the royal rules, and uh, that is true. Nagas are primarily associated with bringing prosperity and good luck. That's not true. The Chinese dragons are. I, I wouldn't say they don't or they're not, but that's not specifically what they're about. They're about protecting. And I believe actually both, this is also true, where both creatures are considered protectors in their respective cultures. The Chinese dragon, I think, I, we didn't talk about it. It may. Some of my students said, yes, they are associated with protecting, but but they are definitely power and wisdom and good luck. Uh, in Thai, it is more about the protecting, protecting the, the temples. You see it in all the Thai temples here. You see them going up the stairways and, you know, on, on the roofs, uh, definitely protectors of, of Buddhism and uh, religious sites. Now, um, here are some, some questions. These are straight up questions. Again, these were directed for my Chinese students who have some basic knowledge on Chinese history and Chinese uh, geography. So these would be more difficult for you, but you can still uh, learn something uh, perhaps from these. Uh, so the question is, the Lantern Festival marks the final day of the Chinese New Year celebrations. If you were to observe the most traditional lantern displays, where would you go? Guangzhou, known for modern interpretations, uh, Shanghai, known for its international influences, or Xi'an, with deep historical roots in Chinese culture. Now, there's kind of leading answers that I think you can figure out. It is Xi'an. Uh, I think that's where the uh, terracotta soldiers are as, as well, unless that's Anxi. There's Anxi and Xi'an. But uh, I think that's Xi'an. A lot of culture there. You can figure that out. Shanghai, of course, is not a very old city in respect. It's not going to have as much Guangzhou. Uh, it is old, but less fundamental in, in Chinese uh, ancient history. So if you are celebrating Chinese New Year in the city known as the birthplace of China's first major dynasty, where are you? So uh, I had some students disagree with this. They said that, but the ma there were major dynasty. There were uh, dynasties before this, but it's Anyang uh, related to the Shang dynasty was the, that's where, again, according to, I actually had AI generate some of these questions. I was creating this lesson plan. I go back and forth, bring real information, try to tie things in together to make it kind of flow well. From my best understanding, that is the correct answer, but I did have a couple of students uh, say something otherwise, and I said, uh, that's fine. I'll, I'll take your word for it. And uh, during the spring festival, families clean their houses to sweep away bad fortune and make way for incoming good luck. This practice likely originated from, again, if you're not Chinese, you probably would have uh, less knowledge of this, but you can kind of think coastal regions due to the humid and salty air. I mean, it doesn't seem as likely. The northern plains where dust and sand from the Gobi Desert influence cleanliness practice. I mean, those all could be possible things, uh, but south of the Yangtze River, where cleaning rituals are prominent, is actually the the the, the correct answer, and not all my students got that. Um, the dragon dance is synonymous with Chinese New Year. If you are watching this dance in the city where the Silk Road begins, you are in Xi'an, again, Xi'an, a very historical town, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, kind of things came from, from that area. Um, now I have a comparative question here. Which event is older, the founding of the Ming Dynasty or the invention of fireworks? And whoop, this was supposed to be covering that up. That is the answer right there. The correct answer is the invention of fireworks older. They're much older, actually. Uh, fireworks were invented in the during the Tang Dynasty. I mean, that might be like a thousand years before or something. And um, um, much earlier than the Ming Dynasty. I asked my students to describe your favorite Chinese New Year tradition and why it's meaningful. Uh, a lot of them, of course, they get they like their lucky money. That's uh, something that is 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 nice. It might not be as meaningful. Uh, they you know they make their dumplings. They visit family. They they do different activities. Sometimes it's families. You know, different families might have their own family traditions that aren't actually part of. Uh, you know, like they travel to somewhere fun or something and eat something good. Um, and now I have a, oh, that one is, uh, we don't need that slide, do we? Uh, I have some some word scrambles. Here's a little fun game just to wrap it up. What word is this? We'll start, we'll, we'll start out easy, and it's a word scramble, right? L, U, 
C. Okay. Luck, right? Luck. Um, so there we go. And then and then there's an easy one just to see what a word of scramble is. And then rhyme. It's it's funny how, how, how Chinese students don't actually understand the concept of rhyme. They don't have to have the same spelling. Words can rhyme that have different spelling, but we'll keep it easy right here. Words that rhyme with oh that's not fire. Uh words that rhyme with luck. Uh I just gave you the answer to one of them. So words that rhyme with luck are duck and truck d and tr those those are the easy ones but i just gave that that one away now you're probably gonna figure out that this one is fire because i just said that I, when i was copying these i didn't even catch that all all, all week long until now um but again th th this is just fun little uh word word scramble the word is fire now these words rhyme with fire what are they uh, now if you're Brit learning british english that that is a y uh, but in American English, we we keep it I, which means it does it is spelled the same way as as the verb to tire. This is a tire, right? The rubber part of the of the wheel. The the entire thing could be the wheel as well. And then what about this? This is in, in my home. I, I'd more likely call it cords, right? Uh, this is like a cord, my uh, you know, extension cord or or phone cord, charging cord. But but when it's more industrial. Definitely the telephone or electric that go outside, those are wires, right? W, a W there, wire. Next one, word scramble here. Do you know what it is? It starts with a D. Then there's an R. Then there's an A. Then there's a G. And then there's an O, N. And yeah, that's easy. That was what we were talking about today. And we're celebrating the year of the dragon. And then did I? So did I? Try to think if I if I did. So this is this is correct here though. Uh, what this word rhymes with dragon, and, and both of these have the same word. I mean, you can they look pretty much the same. But this is a covered, hmm, and this is a toy, hmm, and the word is another another uh, another W there wagon. These are wagons, right? A covered wagon and a toy wagon. So uh, that wraps it up for today's advanced English lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, and, and yeah, I did mention, I, I will, uh, I it's $25 an hour if you want to do a lesson with me. I'll just throw it out there. I actually only have a couple room for a few students. Most of my students are Chinese. Those are the students who uh, are, are looking to learn English and are happy to pay uh, that and uh, so I'll throw it out there, but um, that's really not uh, the purpose. But but I did have a couple of people asking me, and some people thought it was much more expensive because uh, again, I live in Thailand, and I my wife and I worked really hard during our time in Phuket, saved up the money, bought this land. If you look, follow me on on other social media sites, you realize I'm just like an organic farmer living off the land, homeschooling my sun and and just enjoying life in in a simple way and uh this is really my only form of income i really just need about like a thousand dollars a month i'm able to live very comfortably i only teach on saturday and sunday i kind of figured out the the cost to try to beat all other online english teachers and i'm able to because i don't have any any rent or mortgage or debt and uh, I do have the credentials. Uh, my master's degree is in education, focusing on language acquisition. I have a doctorate in psychology. I actually have some uh, people who just like to talk about philosophy or psychology. So uh, my time is is $25 an hour on Saturday and Sunday. I do have some availability, so I'll throw it out there if anybody's interested. But like I said, that's not really the purpose of doing this. I'm just trying to get uh, more... more uh, people involved in what I'm doing. This is just one of many things that I'm doing. Again, the organic farming, the psychology, the, um, the, the growing, the homeschooling, doing all kinds of things. I'm getting involved, the podcasting, and uh, I'm just living a simple life. My philosophy on money basically is money's necessary. Therefore, I want to create a lifestyle that needs as little money as possible. And I've done it. I've succeeded at that someday uh, I, in 2040. I will be completely self-sustainable and I'm not going to be anywhere online. You'll have to come to my land to experience what it's like here at Earthroot. 
That wraps it up. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.